This morning on Wake Up With Hope, Jean Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy will be sharing a devotional thought. Kenya Reyes will be joining us to share exciting Hope Channel marketing news. And we will have a delicious sweet chickpea blondie recipe by Gia and Olive. Stay with us. Happy Monday, friends. Thank you for joining us this morning at Wake Up With Hope. It is always wonderful to start this week with you and with Jesus. Amen, that's right. We're so happy you're with us this morning. We are here to help you start your week off right with the peace and love of God in your life. On today's program, we have Jean Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy sharing with us a very wonderful message. Kenya Reyes will also be with us to share some exciting updates happening at Hope Channel. G and Olive are also joining us to share a sweet recipe. You won't feel guilty eating. But first, this day in history. On this day in history in 1908, the Boy Scouts movement began in England with the publication of the first installment of the then well-known Robert Baden Powell's Scouting for Boys. Baden-Powell was a national hero in Britain after defending Britain in the South African War for 217 days. After this, he had written a military field manual for British soldiers, but it ended up being popular with a younger audience. And boys loved his publications. He capitalized on this popularity and decided to emphasize the importance of morality and good deeds. Before the first official opening of the Boy Scouts Club, Baden-Powell had a test group, an outing with a diverse group of 21 adolescents, and it was a huge success. Needless to say, Boy Scouts are nearly a household name in America. There are clubs scattered all through the U.S., and to be a scout is still largely seen as something of an honor and highly respected. Friends, when Jesus walked this earth, though, he was the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. The large majority of the people did not honor him and see him as anyone special or, or someone to be highly respected. In fact, we all know the story of how he was beaten, he was mocked, spit on, and ultimately crucified. But have you ever contemplated the thought of God himself leaving his glorious heavenly home to come to this world filled with sin, violence, and crime, just to be mocked and beaten? You know, it's an awe-inspiring thought that he put up with it all and without a single complaint. Why? Because he knew what it would take to save us and to save me from the wickedness of this world and to think that all we have to do is to simply say, yes, yes, I thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Yes, I trust you, Lord, with my life today. And Jesus, I surrender all to you. Amen. Did you know that today is International Day of Education? A day dedicated by the United Nations to ensuring that all children everywhere have the right to education. Happy International Day of Education, friends. Are you looking for a healthy recipe to satisfy your cravings for something sweet without feeling guilty? Well, Gia, Olive, and Moses are back with us this morning to share a kid-approved, sweet, guilt-free, and healthy chickpea blondies recipe. What are we making? A chickpea blondie. A chickpea blondie! So the chickpea blondie, what it is, is it's the opposite to a brownie. So it's a blondie. A friend of mine came over for lunch last week and she made them and I was just like, what are these delicious little cakes? And she said, it's like a brownie, but a blondie. Very easy and it's such a good little sweet for kids to put in their lunch boxes. Can you put the oats in here? No! Oh, you wanna put the oats in? Oh, you wanted to eat the oats, okay. My kids love eating dry oats. It's weird. What's next? Yeah. Can we put the chickpeas in? We'll put the chickpeas in. So chickpeas, they're canned chickpeas. I've rinsed them really well. And some vanilla, vanilla essence or extract. Honey. You know a good way to do that is just spray it with a little bit of oil, then put the honey in it. But I didn't do that today. 
Okay, can you pass me that little spatula there, the white spatula again? Good job. Thanks. Wet. Huh? Wet. Okay, get the honey in there. And this is rice bran oil, just to give it some moisture, or you can use non-dairy um, butter or dairy butter, whatever you like. Now in here, I've got uh, baking soda, baking powder, and just a pinch of salt. So you put that in there, and that is it, guys. We are gonna blend it. Okay. Now, because this is a batter, it's supposed to be thick, not overly runny. If you don't have a high-speed blender like I do, because I had to work at using this. Yeah, so you'll have to use a food processor or something like that to try to get into a batter. Now, it's gonna look like this, as you can see. You will have some small pieces of oats in it, but once you bake it, you can't taste that and you can't see uh -huh. it. Yeah. Um, well, what did you get in something? Oh, I'm thinking of putting some white chocolate chips on top, mm. which is optional, but the kids really want it, don't you? Mm. Do you want us to put some on top? Now, instead of the chickpeas, you could also use white beans, okay? Okay, so there we go. Oh, great idea, wetting the spatula. So this is gonna rise just a little bit because of the baking soda and baking powder. I've put it in this silicone dish, baking dish. So Olive's gonna put some white chocolate chips on top. Mama, are you gonna help us? This is optional, you don't have to put white chocolate chips. Put some on them. Just to make it chocolatey. That's heaps, I reckon. We've got heaps in there. Can I have one? Yeah, you can have one. So the blondies are a success. Now I was a bit worried because I hadn't made it before. Like I told you, my friend had made it for us for our lunch last week and it was amazing. And now I made it today in front of you. You saw how I made it. I was a bit worried, but it turned out awesome. We cut it up and everyone tried it here and everyone has to agree that it was moist and delicious. You don't need to put the chocolate chips on top, the white chocolate chips. It doesn't really need it, but it, I mean, it adds to it. It's moist and soft and so good. Please try it. It's such a good one for the kids' lunch boxes and for even your own. 3.30 itis, I get it. If you need a bit of a good, healthy push, have some of this. Wow, chickpeas for dessert. That's a first. <laughs> Who knew that it would be possible to hide chickpeas in such a delicious treat? <laughs> well, we're gonna have to try that one, honey. Yes, we are. Uh, I wanna try that one. <laughs> Friends, have you ever tried one of our recipes? If you have, send us a message on our Facebook page. We would love to know how it turned out for you and which one has been your favorite so far. Well, we have to take a short break now, but when we return, Kenya Reyes will be sharing some exciting updates on what is happening right here at Hope Channel. And don't forget, if you enjoy, are enjoying today's show, share it with a friend right there on Facebook. Click on share or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for staying with us. Kenya Reyes is here with us today to share some exciting updates on what's happening here at Hope Channel. Thank you, Heidi and Christian, and good morning to everyone. Do you want to find freedom from habits that hurt and instead experience habits that heal? Here at Hope Channel, we believe that to be at your most optimal self, you need to take care of your health in a holistic way through your environment, culture, biology, brain, and spirit. Vicki Griffin, a veteran health lecturer, is here to help you on this life-changing program. She doesn't just give you bandage fixes, but addresses addictions and addictive behavior at its root for lasting change. Through educational, inspirational, and motivational elements, you can be sure that you will have the knowledge to detoxify, rebuild, and sustain recovery from addiction and live a full, abundant life. Take a look at this short clip for a glimpse of the many incredible health lessons you will learn. Some of God's most powerful tools for addiction recovery and improved mental health are simple and best of all, free. God has blessed man with fresh air, exercise, and rest as antidotes to many mental, physical, and spiritual maladies. God has indeed created you and I for renewal, restoration, 
and recovery. And his plan for, is for everyone. He wants to lift that label of failure you've been walking in and give you a new life, new habits, and a new perspective. He knows your background, your weaknesses, and your need. And guess what? Everyone needs sleep and exercise. Jesus has the power, the promises, and a plan. You know, we love to claim God's power. We love to claim His promises. But if I sit on the couch and eat bonbons and ask for deliverance from some of these maladies, well, I'm just not going to get much traction. I need to tap into His plan. It's His plan to restore what sin has broken and taken away from you. But the choice is yours, even though the power is His. When you act upon the good impulses that God puts in your heart, that's when real change takes place. Remember, motion balances emotion. Anxiety and especially poor impulse control are major problems in addictive behavior. Exercise reduces both. Fresh air, exercise, and rest increase energy. Yes, increase energy and are powerful weapons against stress and cravings. Are you arguing with yourself about whether you feel like exercising? We must make up our minds that the real question is not, will I exercise? Will I move today? But it's when and where will I exercise? Exercise is powerful medicine. One of my colleagues says there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. Well, I can't tell you I'm there yet, but I make provision for every season, every day, some way, somewhere to get moving. I call it going for a soul stroll. After a short lift, drugs induce stress and anxiety, not true strength and energy. Energy is actually produced in skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is built and energy is built when you move. So before long, these drugs, they leave you. They leave you depleted, depressed, and mentally dull after a quick burst of, of nervous energy. So exercise has a remarkable restorative effect on the brain in several important ways. Walking improves mental processing. Well, that means problem solving, learning, and memory. That means you're quicker off the mark, better able to solve problems. Brisk exercise actually stimulates blood flow, neuron growth, and repair. Now, this is a very important concept because there are growth factors that are produced in the brain during exercise. So the fact that our brains produce new nerve cells is a really wonderful thing. However, their survivability is another. Exercise, good nutrition, and rest ensure brain cell survival. Exercise forces the brain to connect, work, and get back into action. So it actually brings the brain out of hibernation when you're dipping into depression. Regain your mental, physical, or spiritual health today and watch Living Free here on Hope Channel at hopetv.org slash livingfree. And remember, we want to hear how Hope Channel has impacted your life. Whatever your story may be, we want to hear it. Just send in your message to share your story at hopetv.org. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now back to you, Heidi and Christian. Team Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy will be sharing today's devotional message when we return from our short break. Wake Up With Hope we will be right back. Hi friends, are you ready for an inspiring message from the Word of God? Jean Boonstra from Voice of Prophecy is with us here this morning to share this morning's devotional thought. Jean, we can't wait to hear what the Lord has put in your heart. One of the key turning points in World War II occurred on July the 10th of 1943, when Allied troops stormed the beaches of the island of Sicily in the Mediterranean. The success of the Allied operation was in large part possible because of how the Axis powers interpreted information they received. Their wishfulness and desire to see what they wanted to see helped to lead the Allies to what was ultimately victory in Europe. This historical incident reminds me that how we interpret information can be important not only historically, but to our spiritual lives. Let me explain. The Allied success on July the 10th began earlier in 1943 with talks in Casablanca. The Allied forces had just come out of a successful campaign in North Africa. 
And so that January, Churchill and FDR met and discussed the next strategic step for the Allies. The answer was obvious, Sicily. Eisenhower arrived in Casablanca and the plan was set in motion, Operation Husky, the invasion of Sicily. Well, the problem was that Sicily was the obvious next target. It was obvious to the Allies and to the Axis powers. Sicily is just south of mainland Italy, and it's situated strategically in the Mediterranean Sea. Whichever power held Sicily essentially had control of the Mediterranean. And early in 1943, the island was lightly protected and vulnerable. The Axis powers could easily shore up the defense of Sicily, which would be a disaster for the Allies. So how could the Allies convince their enemies that Sicily wasn't their next target? The answer was <laughs> complicated, but here it is. The Allies created an elaborate plan to convince the Axis powers that they would invade Greece, not Sicily, and that they would invade Sardinia to the west. In this elaborate plan, the Allies would convince their enemies that from Sardinia they would move up and into southern France. They had to convince them that Sicily, the obvious next target, wasn't on their radar at all. But how would such an elaborate plan of deception work? Well, each branch of the military worked together to pull off the ruse. Naval intelligence departmental leaders suggested an interesting plan. Their plan was adopted and named Operation Mincemeat. Operation Mincemeat was a creative plan. Naval intelligence would find a dead body and dress it in a Royal Marine uniform. Well, after creating a false identity and documents for this man who never was, he would be released into the waters off the coast of Spain. It would appear as if there was an Allied plane crash and that this man was a courier on his way to Algiers with important documents for an officer. When the body was recovered from the Spanish water, it would certainly be turned over to Italy and Germany, along with the false documents that the Allies had planted on it. Well, Operation Mincemeat was an elaborate plan, and it worked. The body was pulled out of the water off of the coast of Spain on April 30th, 1943. The documents that were so carefully forged and placed in a black briefcase and in uniform pockets were passed on to the Italians and the Germans. The Axis powers read the seemingly official documents. The carefully forged papers told the narrative the Allies wanted them to believe. Greece and Sardinia were their next military targets. Ultimately, the Axis powers believed the elaborate plan, and they didn't reinforce Sicily. As a result, the Allied invasion of Sicily on July the 10th was victorious. It was a major turning point in the war, and an important step toward victory in Europe. Well, why did the Axis powers believe the documents that were found in a deceased man's waterlogged belongings? Well, here's part of the reason. They wanted to believe it. The Allies played on what Admiral John Godfrey, Director of Britain's Naval Intelligence, recognized as a weakness in Axis intelligence. Godfrey described this weakness as a wishfulness. The Axis High Command was concerned that both Greece and Sardinia were vulnerable points. When they read the false documents about planned attacks on these weak areas, their insecurities made them wishful. Not wishful that an attack was imminent, but wishful that their concerns were right. In other words, their intelligence system fed off of the bias of the high command. If there was a concern over something happening, they interpreted intelligence reports accordingly. When presented with conflicting intelligence reports, According to Godfrey, quote, they were inclined to believe the one that fits in best with their own previously formed conceptions, end quote. The Allies used their enemies' own biases to pull off an elaborate operation that was an important step in the Allied victory in World War II. You know, as I read about Operation Mincemeat, I couldn't help but think of another group. 
this group of people also lived in the basin of the Mediterranean Sea, but some 2,000 years ago. We remember them today as the noble Bereans. Paul and Silas were sent to Berea, and as their custom was, they went into the synagogue to teach. They shared about Jesus. They told of his life, his healing ministry, and his death. Paul and Silas had shared this good news in other parts of the Mediterranean basin, and often the people rejected what they heard, but not in Berea. Let's read it from Acts chapter 17 and beginning in verse 10. It says, Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Faced with new information, the Bereans received the word with all readiness. And then they did something noble. They searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were true. They tabled their biases and they searched for the truth. They didn't enter in wishful that what pa Paul and Silas shared was or wasn't true. They searched for the truth and they were blessed in the process. When reading scripture, we can be blessed by following the example of the Bereans. When we search the scriptures, not wishful to find an argument to support our own opinions or ideas, but with readiness to learn the truth. Hope Channel family, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the example of the noble Bereans. It's our heart's desire to search the scriptures to learn more about you, to learn more of the good news that Paul and Silas shared so long ago, the same good news that can transform our lives today. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and leading us ultimately to victory, victory in you. Amen. Thank you for starting your Monday morning with us. Whatever this new week has in store for you, you can have hope in the midst of it. Invite God to go with you every step of the way. Thanks for joining me for a few minutes in God's Word, words that gave hope to the Bereans and can give hope to us today. Thank you, Jean. And friends, thank you so much for being with us here today and watching Wake Up With Hope. If you would like to learn more about our program or share us with a friend, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. Please join us tomorrow morning, friends. We will have an uplifting devotional message from Jesus 101. The Let's Pray team will be with us for a prayer session and we will have an insightful discussion on standing. Also, if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and would like to learn more, please visit hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. We wish you all the best for this upcoming week. May God bless you in all that you do. And before we go, we want to share a special Bible promise with you today. It's found in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 13. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. This morning, we invite you to cling to this promise like never before. Friends, God longs to be with you. Let that thought sink in. He longs to have you hold on to Him through all the ups and downs in life. And today, He's whispering in your ear saying, do not fear, I will help you. What a wonderful promise. Beautiful. And let's pray that we would hold on to the hand of Jesus throughout this entire day. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, this is a promise that we choose to believe. We're not going to wait to feel like believing or, or feel like you're with us. No, we simply choose to believe that you are faithful to your promise that you are by our side because you promised that as we go through this day, you will walk with us because you promised. And Lord, by faith, we take hold of your hand and we choose to hold it close to our hearts all through this day. Thank you, Lord, for being faithful and being so good to us. In Jesus' name, amen.